Hey gang, it's Andrew Beam here, your fearless leader. Hey, I am coming to you today with a little conversation about limiting belief. Um, someone the other day asked me to talk about this and I agreed. And so I kind of wanted to shoot this little video here for you to talk about limiting belief because every single one of us has limiting belief. Yes, me too. I have plenty of them. Um, we are not, not immune to having limiting beliefs. None of us are. But what is a limiting belief? I mean, a limiting belief is really just a conviction that we trust as being true. Okay. A, a limiting belief is a conviction that we trust as being true. There's a lot of different kinds of limiting beliefs, and I'm going to cover a couple of those. And then we're also going to go through how you can start intentionally questioning those limiting beliefs that you have and trying to turn the tables on them, so to speak. So I want you to think about a limiting belief that you might have about your business. Let's pick a really easy one and just say, gosh, um, business is really hard, right? Like this real estate business, man, it is harder than I thought. And so when you come to work and you have that thought process of, man, this is really hard, you're going to walk yourself right into a battle. Every single day, you're gonna feel like you're coming in with your gloves on or you're gonna come in already feeling defeated and you haven't even started because you've already convinced yourself that this is going to be hard, right? Now, vice versa, if you have the mentality or the, the belief that, man, this business is actually pretty simple when you think about it. It's not, it's not easy, but it's simple then when you come to work, there is a different way in which you approach that business, right? You approach it with confidence, you approach it with ease, um, you tackle things a little bit lighter, right? Um, or feeling a little bit lighter. So think about how this is impacting your guys' businesses. So there's a couple different types of limiting beliefs. I wanna cover those really quick. You have environmental, you have your interpretation, you have assumption, and you have your drunk monkey, right? That little thought in your head that the devil likes to put there and go, wah, 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 right? We all have that too. Okay, so number one, let's talk about environmental. I'm gonna give you an example of an environmental limiting belief. That would be like, man, this real estate market, there is just no listings for me to be able to take in this market. It, it's just too hard, right? There's, there's just no listings out there. That would be an example of an environmental limiting belief. Let's take an interpretation. You get a text message and you interpret that text message as negative and it gives you a certain feeling, right? That would be a, an interpretation of something. You put your belief onto that um, text message, interpret it a certain way. Uh, number three is gonna be assumption. So an assumption might be something like, um, well, it didn't work in the past, so it's probably not gonna work in the future, right? That would be an assumption. Or it didn't work for so-and-so, so it's probably not gonna work for me. Or another way of putting it might be, well, I tried that once before and it didn't work. You didn't give it 20 times of trying an open house, you gave it one time. Right. And this industry, as we know, is a marathon, not a sprint. So that would be an example of an assumption. A the last one, your fourth one is going to be your drunk monkey. And usually these ones are going to be a little more deep seated. These are going to be ones that usually start with a statement or a whisper in your brain of saying, I am. I am not smart enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not witty enough. I'm uh, not outgoing enough. I'm, I'm too quiet. I'm too loud. I'm whatever, right? Usually starts with the I am and there's probably a million I am statements that we say to ourselves in our own head on a daily basis. So a lot of this has to do with programming, you guys. So Point far, if you guys have ever heard of point far, I want to explain to you a little bit about what point far is. Point far is, um, it stands for programming. Your programming or your beliefs lead to your thoughts, and your thoughts are going to lead to the feelings that you have, and then the feelings you have are going to lead to the actions that you take, and those actions you take are going to lead to the results that you get, right? So now you've got this 
programming, right? The structure of how a belief impacts everything else about what you do and how you react and how you feel, okay? So one of the ways we can combat these limiting beliefs is asking yourself this one simple question. I actually have several questions, but start with this one. Is it 100% true? Ask yourself that. Is it 100% true? Is it 100% true that there's no listings going on the market right now? Well, pull up the multiple listing service and see how many listings went live today or this week. How many listings went live? Because if one of your limiting beliefs is, well, it's the first week of January, nobody's putting listings on the market, go pull up the multiple listing service and see how many listings got made live between the first and today. I just had two that are going live this week. So I know that you guys can question yourselves on, is that statement 100% true? It's easy to fall into that trap. Here's another question for you. In the case of an environmental uh, limiting belief, ask yourself what's really in your control and what's not in your control. Um, that particular example of, um, of the listings being available would be an example of, well, is that in my control, you know, whether or not listing, I take a listing. Absolutely, that is in your control, 100%. So ask yourself the question, is that in my control or out of my control? Um, in the case of interpretation, ask yourself the question, if you looked at it a different way, would you feel differently? If you looked at that text message as a positive text message instead of a negative one, does it cause you to feel differently or react differently to that text message? On the assumption side of things, Ask yourself, if it were possible, what could you do to make it come true? If it, if it actually was possible to list five properties next week, what would you have to do to make that happen? What would you have to do to actually make that a possibility in the realm, right? Um, and then last but not least, the drunk monkey. How do you know that that belief is true in your head? Ask yourself that. If you say, I am not smart enough, well, how do you know that that's true? Do you have like, do you have proof? Because your mind is probably searching for proof, right? Your mind is probably searching for um, something to show you. Yeah, boy, that's right. You're not smart enough. So start questioning yourself. And then here's the kicker. You've got all these questions you can ask yourself, but ask them to someone else. Tell someone else your limiting belief and see how realistic that limiting belief actually sounds because when i say out loud gosh there's no listings on going to be going on the market or going in the multiple listing service and i say that out loud to somebody and they say well is that 100 percent true hmm, no okay not no it's not 100 percent true okay okay then what could you have done to change the outcome of that to say there was 20 listings that went on the market this week how could you have been one of the agents that listed one of those 20. So I hope I've given you guys some thoughts to chew on, um, to really question yourselves on any limiting beliefs that you guys are facing right here at the beginning of the year. This is our year, guys. This is our year to tackle um, and to really go out there and show the world what we can do.